heard about all the scams going on with rentals, it is so bad. Don't be a victim. In this video, I'm going to give you seven different ways that you can protect yourself from getting scammed. I'm going to tell you who I am, how do I even know this stuff, I'm going to tell you what the big scam is, and then I'll give you those seven ways you can protect yourself. So let's get started. I'm Monique Burns. I have my own investment properties in Detroit, Michigan, and I also am a house flipper. I used to have a whole property management company. I sold it about a year ago. If you're interested in renting from me, just go to my website. I usually don't have much listed at a time because we just flip a few houses at a time. It's kind of funny because my houses are usually rented before they're even renovated. And when people are like, I'm afraid you're a scammer and they don't want to give me the money, I'm like, yeah, I totally get it. The scams are so bad out there, but I'm really super public. I'm all over social media. So that's a little bonus thing you guys should look for is if the landlord, usually landlords aren't all over social media like I am, you could really hurt a person who is as public as I am. Let me tell you what the big scam is. And just a couple weeks ago, I had this woman show up at my house and she was so mad. And she said, do you own that house on Lauder? And I stood out, I was out on my front porch going, yeah, actually it's a partner that owns it. And I'm kind of representing the partner, but that was too much to get into. So I'm like, yeah, why? She said, well, I gave all this money and now the person I gave it to is gone. Is that person you? Because I found you and my brother is a police officer. And I'm like, whoa. I had to explain to her what happens. People will take ads. They've taken my ads, this has happened many times, but what they do is they find people that didn't put those watermarks on their photos, and I'll post my ads on Zillow, and they'll take all those photos, and they'll go put the ad on Craigslist, or recently it's been on Hot Pads. And what's weird is that Zillow feeds out, so when I post to Zillow, it cost me $10, but then it goes to Trulia and it also goes to Hot Pads. So when she said that it was somebody from Hot Pads, I thought, wow, somehow they're figuring out how to take my information off Hot Pads and swap out their own information. Well, they, this person told her he was a truck driver. He could be there. Just give me the money and I'll give you the keys. And she did it. And I felt so badly for her. And I told her I'm happy to help. And she settled down but she might have left more angry because I wasn't the person that hurt her. But that's what the scam is. So now there's all kinds of red flags though that happen in the scam. First of all, they'll rent it for a price that is too good to be true. So if you see a house, like all the houses now, the three bedrooms in Detroit are starting at like 900 in 2021 now. It just seems high, but that's what they're at right now. If they're renting it for 800, 750, too good to be true, something's up there. If they're not doing a thorough background check, like you know you had some stuff on your background and they're just skipping over it and desperate people do desperate things. So you can like, you're, you're not thinking like, that's weird. Think about that. That's a little weird that they're not asking you those things. And like their criteria that is just shoddy. I've done it before where I knew someone stole my ad and this was a few years ago and I thought, oh, I'm gonna mess with the scammer. So I'm emailing them and I'm saying, do you accept pets? Yes. And I said, okay, well, I have a pet ostrich and these are not allowed in Detroit. <laughs> and they said, yes, we'll accept your pet ostrich. I'm like, oh, this is so ridiculous. So then I really pushed the envelope and I wrote back, I said, do you like do self-employed people doing business out of their homes? We hate that when people do that. He's like, yes. So I wrote back, I said, oh, good, because I, I build fireworks and I was gonna use the basement to build my fireworks. Is that okay? And they wrote back, yes. And I'm like, really? Come on, how bad is that? Another thing I noticed with the scammers is they'll use words that we don't really use much in the United States because a lot of these scammers aren't from around here and they use the word inquiry or they call a house an apartment or they use the word kindly or cordially. Would you be so kind? I'm like, who talks like that? So that to me is like kind of a red flag. Um, not always because there could be an owner that owns a house that's foreign that's trying to manage it from somewhere else but who's your contact here that's who you really need to talk to you don't need to deal with somebody that can never meet you i mean who's going to come do the maintenance can't somebody meet you like just sending your money that's a red flag just send me money okay and then my other one is like getting money down if you've never seen the house but that's what i do because i the houses are getting renovated and I'm like, so let's talk about the seven things you can do i kind of mentioned some of them so the first one is google the address of the house so the woman that saw my house on hot pads usually it's craigslist but they'll see the house 
she could have Googled my address of that house and she would have seen that I also have it on Zillow. And when she saw it on Zillow, she would have realized that on Zillow, it was a different property management company. It wasn't this guy who's a trucker supposedly. So that's a very important thing to do. Now, something else you can do, if you really wanna dig, you really wanna be sure, is you can look up the address on public record. And I think this is very, very valuable. And this is something that I do when people give me um, a reference of their landlord and I have to call their landlord. So I will go on public record and it, uh, here's the website you can go on. Now in Detroit, it's by county. Well, everywhere it's by county. So figure out what county is your house in. Call the deed office for that county and say, how can I look up public record? And they should be able to tell you how to do it. And it does cost money. Our public record in Wayne County costs like six bucks, six dollars and 40 cents for some re weird reason. And they give you 15 minutes and you can look for 15 minutes. And I take notes like, okay, was there a mortgage company? Who was the mortgage company? What year did they buy it? Um, how much did they pay for it? What name is it under? What business name is it under? Who did they buy it from? When was that transaction? When did that transaction happen? And there's lots of different transactions that you can see. And sometimes like if somebody gets behind on their taxes, it looks like they they lost the house to taxes, but that's not always necessarily what happened. The city files all this stuff. So what you're looking at is like a whole chain of title of every owner from before then and before then and before then. So you want to get like, it's kind of hard. You have to read through and you're kind of an investigator, but you can do it. It's just common sense. If you can read, just go through it. And if something seems weird, you can actually ask the landlord about it later. And that'll also help you know if it's legit. Here's a really good one. You can ask a neighbor, who owns this house? Now it's funny with us is they always think it's my husband that owns the house uh, because he's the guy that they see around. Or they'll see Jeff, who's our guy that drives the big white van and Jeff has a goatee. And now there are questions that you can literally ask the landlord or ask the property manager. And don't be afraid to ask these, but it all depends on how you do it. Now, if somebody comes at me full guns, like, yeah, you better prove to me you own that house. I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm still in trouble. This tenant's gonna be nothing but trouble from day one, I don't even want her, goodbye. But if somebody comes at me and says, you know, I've been through so many scams, I've heard about scams, I am just really trying to protect myself. I would just, you know, I hope you don't mind if I just ask you a few little things. I'd be like, absolutely. Since I've been doing this since 2007, nobody's ever asked me anything to verify that I'm the real landlord or the owner or a part owner or whatever. Nobody's ever asked. I would be ecstatic if somebody actually had questions to ask me. And so go into it gently. And what you could ask, I'm on, I'm on the fourth thing. This one I got from a tenant before. And she said what she does is she'll ask the landlord for other photographs. So let's say I put a kitchen photo in my ad. She'll say, do you have one from like a different angle? And that way it's not like the stolen photos and I know it's that kitchen. Don't do like the living room. All the living rooms in Detroit look the same, you know, the wood, the walls, <laughs> but do some identifying room. And even like the bathrooms, there's there's only certain color bathrooms in Detroit. You know, get something identifying about the house. Maybe. Or if they're like, no, I really don't have any more because it happened to me before where somebody has asked me for more photos and I that person that talked to me and I, I actually didn't have any other photos. But um, I could have asked Jeff, who's working on the house, can you grab a photo of something? Or I could have said, can you FaceTime? Or there's a way to, on Facebook to do like what you do on FaceTime from inside the house so that she can I, match the house to the actual people that are allowed in the house. I thought that was clever. Number five was to confirm what you saw in public record. And I will ask the people, I'll be like, you know, I know this is like really hard, but um, I did eliminate a tenant because I did ask a landlord once these questions. And she's like, these are a lot of questions. I'll have to get back with you. I think you're being too nosy. And I thought, well, you're a scammer. I don't even believe you're a real landlord because any landlord should be happy to answer these questions. These are not nosy. This is public record. What year did you buy the house? Now, if you were to ask me that with my houses, I started buying my first one in 07, and I think it was like for five or six years, we bought a batch of houses. I couldn't tell you any closer with that. I kind of know which ones were in the beginning, kind of which ones were in the end. So I couldn't totally nail it if you asked me that. But if you asked me what name I bought it under, I could give you that. If you asked me the taxpayer address, 
I could tell you where the taxpayer address is. That's something else to look for when you're looking in the public record is where is the tax bill sent? You gotta kinda do some digging. Like where did they mail the deed to? If it wasn't to the house that they bought, they usually mail it to the taxpayer address. Um, if there was a mortgage on the house, I could tell you which bank the mortgage was. It's, you know, you could ask what'd you pay for, but then you're kinda like pushing it a little bit because you don't want like you're asking people private business about their money, but you could go there. Like in Detroit, a lot of houses were bought at a tax auction. You can kinda tell that. Was it bought on a quick claim deed from Wayne County? You could say, did you buy it from a private person or was it an auction house? You know, that's not so private and offensive of a question. You could be more comfortable asking that. And then when they're asking for money, make sure you've got something in writing. If they're asking for, and that's uncommon to ask for that little amount, but if they're asking for a big amount, you want something written out. You want their contact information. You want to have an address where you, if you have to sue them, that you can serve them. That needs to be on that piece of paper. You need to have like a company name or a name of who you're paying this to, a real person that exists because you went and Googled the name, you know, you before you do that. Because that way when you go to small claims court because they ran off with your money, you have a way to come after them for it. Now somebody that's going to be a scammer and run off with your security deposit, isn't gonna give you that. So, and there's nothing wrong with asking for that. And don't say, it's because if I sue you, I wanna have make sure my server has an address where they can serve, I mean, you don't say it like that. You just say, ah, oh, I just need something in writing, you know, like a really good receipt. Oh, can you give me a better receipt that has a name and address on it? You know, something to that effect. Nobody has ever asked me this, and this blows my mind. Why not a reference? Like, ask me, do you have any other tenants, Monique, that I could talk to that could tell me what kind of a landlord you are? Absolutely I do. I've had my same tenants from when we started buying houses. They could tell you what kind of landlords we are. That was back in 2008. You want a good reference? There's a great one. But um, any landlord should be able to do that. Don't be a victim. Do a little bit of homework. It's not that hard. And that will protect you from giving your money away to some crazy scammers. And spread the word. Share this with all your other friends. And I have a lot of other videos that I'm making on this channel about things to do to help yourself as a tenant it, that I'm just making these as a public service thing. It's a way I can give. So thanks for watching.